Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Property Hustler Show, where today we're going to be talking about the importance of mindset, real estate education, and how your success in real estate is really a byproduct of how you think. Today, Ping and I are joined by a very special guest, Gary Hibbert, who is a longtime real estate investor. He is also a realtor, but most importantly, he's a podcast host and real estate mentor. So, Gary, it is very great to have you on the show. Listen, I am excited to be here, and I can't wait to see how and what we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I really like your slogan, be the investor, don't, don't be a landlord. Or something oh, yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we, we always say that to people. It's just like, are you a landlord or are you an investor? See, exactly. Part of the whole hook <laughs> of those landlords was that, and this is how we used to convert them, is like we would meet them and then we would, you can tell, you know how you meet a landlord, they drive a vehicle, like they got a bunch of construction tools in there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then yeah. you meet them and then, you know, they're just like, oh, yeah, I've been a real estate investor for a long time. I'm just like, are you? <laughs> are you really a real estate yeah, yeah, investor? Yeah. Investor or landlord? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know. And the whole thing is, yeah, like, what is the difference? And people, there's a fine line that in the difference between landlording and real estate investing. And people often get stuck as landlords mm -hmm. and fail to be real estate investors that they had set out to be, not realizing that landlording is a job. One hundred percent. It's okay to have a job. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. If you enjoy it. Yeah, as, right. and, and, as long, <laughs> and as long as you know that that's what you're doing, yeah. you can be real with yourself. The worst is when people lie. People exactly. lie to themselves and say, "Yeah, exactly. no, I'm a real estate investor." I'm yeah. like, "Cool. I don't know how many real." Did, when you picture real estate investor do you picture them hugging the toilet unless they're partying so hard that they're hugging the toilet <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's a different that, that, yeah, that's yeah, a different yeah. toilet you should be hugging yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no that's why we always kind of tease people that hey listen like you you're in real estate full-time like you literally promote yourself from your full-time job into a property manager your stuff is good by the way how long have you been doing it i've been doing it since 2008 2008 yeah. you're a veteran yeah, yeah. guy so i've been around for a little while now yeah, yeah, yeah. you know it was a little slow and then kind of started picking things up it's been it's been an interesting ride yeah. It really has been. It's probably one of the best things that I've ever done. Not just the real estate investing piece of it, but just the entrepreneurial part of it, right? And the mindset, being able to to do things only when you have a little bit of the information and then just moving forward with it. Yeah. Because I, when people wait to get it all, they they overanalyze and they yeah. overthink, right? And you heard the, the saying, right? Analysis paralysis. Yeah. That's something you hear all the time in this world, right? But that's what it was for me. It just I just made a shitload of mistakes. Yeah. And but I just kept learning faster. from it. But it's not even the mistake. It's, it's either, there's, there's two, at least to me, there's two things. It's just either success or you learn. That's it. Yeah. Success or learn. And, and I think when you're in school, you know, there's this emphasis of don't make a mistake. No, make mistakes, man. That's where you learn. Yeah, if, okay. if everything goes according to plan, well, then you didn't learn anything because you executed it perfectly. So it turned out exactly how it was supposed to be. So you didn't learn anything. You just implemented something. We even believe in like making a decision quicker is important too. 100%. Yeah. Speed right? of implementation. Money follows speed. Because like even if you make a wrong decision, you're going to pivot anyway. You're going to make adjustment right away and then mm -hmm. you end up making the right decision. Yeah. But there's going to be a lot of people who are trying to overanalyze every little details and then they're, they're stuck. They freeze. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and you just end up not moving and you lose the, the momentum afterwards. 100%. Yeah. There's a lot of justification for it too. Like people can justify it. Like sometimes people say, oh, yeah, you know, you're trying to rush me into things, but not realizing that, no, I'm just trying to get you to get over yourself. And, and, and realizing that your, your potential, you see a potential in them. Yeah. And so you're, you're helping them push through that barrier. Yeah. And, and the thing too is that once you kind of push through that barrier, you can always kind of come back into your comfort zone again. Yeah. But now you've got a, a larger circumference of, where you've been able to kind of push yourself. Yeah. Right. And you push yourself again, you kind of come back into that. But you've learned new stuff. You've learned things that now become, you know, second nature to you. When you go to a party, because I always struggle with this, when you go to a party and you have to, you meet new people or something, mm -hmm. right? I don't know how much you go to parties. Yeah. But like, well, I still party. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. <laughs> but no, when you go, when you go out to some kind of social event, you meet new people yeah. uh, and somebody says, so, so what do you do? What do you tell them? Do you say like, oh, podcast, I'm a realtor, or do you say like, I'm an entrepreneur? Like, what, how do you, what do you do? What do you say? It, it, it depends. It depends because it's always, it's different depending on who I'm talking to and, and how the conversation is going. But if they do ask me, I say, hey, like, so what do you do? I, I say, depending on the time when they ask me, what I enjoy doing the most. So it might have been real estate invest. Now, right now, it's um, podcast. Mm -hmm. So like, I, I just sit down and have conversations with with people who are successful and have uh, made some mistakes to learn from them yeah. that have really kind of helped change the trajectory of my life. Do you answer differently depending on the impression you want to make? Not really. No? So no. It's, it's consistent it, based on time yeah, of what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just depends on what's happening in my life at that time. Yeah. So it, it'll change because it, it changes as, as you grow and as you shift. Yeah. Right? So depending on what I'm trying to do, like when I was a realtor, yeah. then I was telling people, hey, look, I, I'm a realtor. Yeah. Right? Because I'm trying to get business. Yeah. But that's not really the focus anymore. Yes, I still have a real estate business, right? But now it's more kind of focusing on like a different path, like more on like more on geographical freedom. So I'll kind of maybe talk a little bit more about that in the podcast and how it's changed my life. Or 
depending on what they're doing in their life also too. Because I like to ask people first what they're doing, what's happening in their life. And then from there, then I go, oh, okay, yeah, look, I got a private lending company. Da, 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 da. And I could talk more about that. Yeah. Oh, you're a realtor. Hey, I'm a realtor too. I got a, I own a brokerage. You should kind of maybe check out what we're doing over there. It's really cool. We got a lot of education. So it depends. Mm-hmm. But an entrepreneur, I feel like also it's a diluted title these days. People throw right. the word around like it's like just like something you want to be affiliated to, right? But you actually are. Because even the things like when I look at your content, you talk about some of the things that they're really growth lessons. Some of the things that uh, people talk about, you can tell when they come from true experiences that they've had growing and going through their own journey Mm -hmm. versus people who read a fortune cookie or heard it on another podcast and they just talk about it, right? Non-tangible examples. Yeah, I I can tell you real stories. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can tell you about sleepless nights. For sure. Honestly, sometimes when we're on the podcast, right, we hear about certain story, right, that we can literally tell whether or not that story is actually true or not. Right. Right, from a speaker, right? Because uh, because, uh, right now there's a lot of coaches out there who learn a concept from somewhere else and maybe try for a couple of properties and then they start teaching, right? We were like, we're in the game for a while now and then we're not even on social media. We're not, trying to teach anybody because we never feel like we're qualified when we first like noticing you it's like we could tell that a lot of stories came from a i guess a sweat equity yeah, kind of point well, of view I, right i appreciate that so where yeah. did you find me then was it on instagram on instagram uh, first, yeah. on instagram okay and then uh, obviously your podcast and and then uh we also like the in your, some of your short videos so we we noticed that you're doing the coaching and yeah. then uh, you also have a uh I think the private lending, right? Yeah, private lending. Because yeah. you guys are trying to be a little passive, uh, like yeah. try to earn your time back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I can tell you that story and why we ended up getting into it as well too, because that's an mm-hmm. interesting story. Yeah. And, and and really what I'm always trying to get across is why are you doing what you're doing? And don't get so caught up in watching what other people are doing and then trying to exactly mimic them. Take pieces of it, but know what it is that you're trying to accomplish in your life and then focus on that. Because if not, you get caught in that shiny stone scene. the shiny stone is really something i think a lot of people fall into like uh, we we talk about it often how people will watch all these other people on social media and they will see these like pinnacles right mm-hmm. and people start chasing oh that's what i want to be but like just because you saw it and it was attractive at the time doesn't mean that that's really what you want and sometimes people do things that are actually against their nature mm-hmm. like i hear people talk about how they want to get into real estate all the time and then just judging by their nature i'm like do you really yeah. Like, is this really for you? Right. Like I don't, uh, and sometimes I don't think it is for some people, but they view it as the vessel of success, right? Because like in North America, what do we see? We see if you if you own multiple properties, people view you as successful, and actually, arguably, sometimes more successful than if you have a nice car or if you have like uh, money in the bank. People view pe- it's like a cu- there's a culture around there, yeah. right? So people people get into it sometimes for the wrong reasons. And actually, I, I know you were talking about how mentorship, education, you do the podcast is yep. all very important for you, which, you know, leads me to think that you probably went through a journey where you hired mentors yes. and you took on a lot of education. So it's something you believe in. 100%. And that's why you do it. Yeah. Then I have the question. When did you hire your first mentor? I hired my first mentor, but 2016 is when I hired my first mentor. And I remember when I did it, right? I wasn't sure if I should or not. I can't afford it. Was I that for the sales it. or for the investment? It was It was more along the lines of being an entrepreneur, a business owner. Yeah. Like I had smart home choice and I was like, okay, how, how do I grow this? How do I take it to the next level so that I'm not working in my business, I'm working on my business. Right. And so then I hired a coach who was like around the the premise of like more mindset, building out systems. And I was like, okay, cool, let's do this. And I remember I talked to my neighbor about it. And he's like, you're going to spend how much? I think mentors are a waste of time. And he just went in this whole rant about it. When you talk to somebody who isn't <clears throat> doing what you want to do or isn't kind of where you want to, to be or go, you have to be careful of getting advice from them. Now, I thought about it, but being in the right room, being around the right people, I knew that it was the right thing to do but I also knew it was expensive. I'm going to be in it for like two or three months, steal all this shit. I'm going to figure it all out and I'm going to get out. It's not that there's a magic bullet. There is no magic bullet. It's these little small things that you learn. Yeah. And that's that's really what he kind of taught me. So that was important. And I remember asking him, like, give me one thing that you can share with me that will help me understand and realize why I'm dropping a thousand dollars. Just give me one thing. Give me a, at least one magic bullet. And he goes, sticky notes. And I'm like, sticky notes? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean sticky notes? And he goes, what you got to do if you want to change a habit is he goes, just put a sticky note in your mirror. Say smile today because you woke up. Put a sticky note on your fridge, right? Don't forget to drink a glass of water. Put a sticky note wherever it may be. And those little small things is what starts to help change. And I think what people need to realize and understand is that if you've lived a certain way for a certain period of time, you, you're talking about changing the direction of a Titanic ship. You can't change it on a dime. It mm-hmm. takes time. Yeah. 
And so that's what it is. What I realized is that these little small things of incremental changes that will eventually change your trajectory and the path that you're going on. But you need that mentor to help you because usually your mentor can help you see your enemies before you do. And that is usually you. Right. And by the way, like, <laughs> I like, it. I like yeah, it. That's yeah, good. No. yeah, that's what a lot of people are talking about. Like creating a right habit is going to get you the result. Habits equals results because a lot of people talk about results actually come from doing things consistently. Mm -hmm. And without that right habits or without removing the wrong habits, you will not have that kind of mental energy to, to even create a, a, I guess, a again, habit to do the right thing every single day, right. right? And if you can do one thing right every single day, like imagine like the uh, over the course of three months, six months, or even two, three years, that's the difference that you're going to create uh, or separation that you're going to create for anybody else. Yeah, a, a lot of people will uh, approach coaches or education oftentimes in the wrong way. You know how many people treat education like recreation like entertainment it's, 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 yeah it's like yeah. It, education is just fun something you do is you post it on instagram that i'm on a seminar or a conference and it's like oh this is like fun this is cool and then there's other people who go towards education and say well they're telling me some pretty common sense things like i know this stuff yeah. do you remember there was this commercial on the radio a while ago and there's this guy talking about weight loss or something and he says if you could do it yourself you would have done it already it was kind of like you know it was a little rude but at the same time he's not wrong right and you know the same way that people go to the gym and everybody understands the value of hiring a coach at the gym Yep. Or if you're going to boxing or anything like that, anything that you need to really focus and develop a discipline that maybe you could potentially do it on your own, but it's definitely a lot easier with somebody else in your corner. 100%. Yeah. Ha having somebody who's going to look out for you professionally, you. not just as a favor, who's going to have some accountability and like they, they treat this with a professional etiquette to see your success. Powerful, man. 100%. Yeah. I agree also with keep it. you aligned. Yeah. 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 Mentorship is so important. It really is. It helps to fast track your path. There's landmines out there in any business or whether it be real estate investing or whether it be being a realtor, or whatever it is that you're doing, if you follow the path of somebody else that's walked it, it's so much easier. Mm. That's that's really what mentorship is all about, yeah. right? Yeah, avoid the mistakes that you don't have to make. Yeah, right? Just yeah. Focus exactly. on doing what's uh, what's correct. What in your mentorship program? What do you what do you offer to the student? It's it's about real estate investing, but more importantly, right, is helping them get to that very, whether it be the first property or or scaling their portfolio. But the very first month, what we talk about, which I think is incredibly important, is goal setting and um and and determining and figuring out what it is that you want in your life. Mm. So the very first thing that we do. This is so important, right? Um, is and I tell them, write down 50 things that you want in your That's life. That's challenging for a lot of people. You're damn right it is. Yeah. It's super hard. First, I used to, I started off with 100, but 50. Most people can't do it. Where'd you get that from? Sorry, where did you... Did you Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn? Jim Rohn. Oh. Jim Rohn, yeah, if you watch any of my stuff, Jim Rohn is, was my mentor. He okay. is somebody that I listened to. It started off in 2008, listened to Jim Rohn. And really what led me to Jim Rohn, and I will get back to that question, is my brother had brought over the secret. Now, the secret didn't give you the other piece, which was the action piece. It was just more like, hey, have a vision, believe in yourself. The sauce. Right, the universe. is like It was talking about the, 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 the law of attraction. And I kind of believed it, but I didn't. And then 2008, when I almost lost my, my job and realized that... I needed to do something different and real estate was a path before I really got into it. Then I started listening to Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn was what changed my mindset. And I think people need to do the mindset piece first before they jump into any business. I agree. Mindset yep. is the most important piece. So going back now to writing down 50 things, I tell people, write down 50 things. I don't care what it is. It could be a pair of shoes to a yacht, to a mansion, whatever it is, just dream. Now I'm teaching you just to dream. Learn a dream. De de determine what it is that you want in your life. Then after that, here's what you're going to do. You're going to write a one, a three, or a five, or a 10. Because what, and, and what those numbers represent are realistically, how long will it take for you to get those one year, three years, five years? Or then what you do is you take anything that has a three or a five or a 10 beside it, and you put it in your drawer and you don't even look at it. What ends up happening is people have these big vision boards of these big things that they want, and it's too daunting. Focus on the one year goal. Because at least that, those are things that are realistic. Those are things that you can get sometime within this year. Then when you do that, then you want to put it on your whiteboard. Because now you want to be able to see it. You want to be able to see it every single day. And then when you do that, you want to now clearly define those goals. And they got to be smart goals. So specific, measurable, attainable, relevant time. That's how we came up with smart home choice. It had nothing to do with real estate. It had to do with goal setting. To me, that was way more important. And then when you put those goals on the board that you want, right? Then you have to figure out, pick the top three, 
and say, why do you want? Them? Because when the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. And that is how you start goal setting. So that's the very first thing that I start teaching people and reverse engineering. And what is your number? And how much money do you want to make a month? That's what we focus on. Then the next month, then we get into the history of money. How does that even work? So I go back to the Roman Empire to understand gold and silver and even the printing of money back then. Because printing of money is not a new concept. That's been going on for years hundreds and thousands of years. So then now, if you can understand that, then understand what happened in the Great Depression, then understand what happened at the end of World War II and the gold standard, and then what happened with Richard Nixon in 1971 when he took them off the gold standard, what's happening today, then you can understand where, the, where they're taking us. Then you can better prepare yourself for what's happening in the future. Because listen, history doesn't always repeat, but it rhymes. And so if you can see the rhythm then you can understand where things are going. By the way, that's a rich dad, poor dad crash course right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so those are the first two months before, and then we get into yeah. raising capital because raising capital is important, right? For if sure. you understand how to raise capital, then you never have to, then you never become lustful for money. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Right. You can now attract it when you need it. We talk about that sometimes too, because like everybody's biggest problems are one of three things. Fear of failure, have no time, have no money. And the whole thing about having no money is that not realizing that your money is your biggest limitation. Your money is your biggest limitation. All the players who have been doing this for a long time, they stopped spending their money a long time ago. Credibility, knowledge. And right. that's what people want. People want ease of access, somebody that they can trust. Like if I come to you and I'm saying, hey, I trust that you can invest the money well, I'll invest in you and I'll invest in your plan because I like you and I hopefully like your plan. And that's, you know, the whole thing about the money part. But yeah. I like what you said. And it sounds like what you're saying is that all those fundamentals ultimately lead to your success into real estate as a byproduct. It's not that you have to learn how to do the specific things. If you learn how to how to sculpt your mindset and to understand how the system works, mm -hmm. if you want to go buy homes, if you want to do everything else, it's like a byproduct of your mindset rather mm -hmm. than just learn how to do this one thing. And then what it also does as well too is that you then stop blaming your surroundings or people around you for where you are in your life. The mindset piece then starts to shift the focus back onto you and your failures and why you are where you are today. That's the mindset piece, as opposed to saying, well, they don't pay enough. Well, then no, they don't pay you. I guarantee something in that company is getting a lot more money. So it's you, it's not, it's, it's not the company, right? And so it shifts the blame on you. Yeah. Right. And I, and I remember this one thing, Jim Rohn, in, in regards to tax are too high and I don't want to pay this amount of tax. And then he said something was, which was really important. It's like, look, I'd rather have a fat goose and no goose at all. Because look, I don't know how to pave roads. I don't know how to get hydro to my house. I don't know how to get gas into my house. Yeah, I get it. Taxes are a little high. So stop complaining about that. And then just focus on making more money. So it's not that it's too expensive. What it comes down to is you can't afford it. So, so that's where the mindset and that's where you really start to say, okay, I need to now start shifting what I'm doing with my life. Yeah, it's the extreme ownership that people need 100%. to solve. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Now, at that point, you end up becoming the solution. You know, a few of the things you're saying come from a few books I think I read too a while ago. I think one of them, even the fifty things, writing them down. I read that in this one book. It was like one of the first books I read, Chicken Soup for the Soul by Jack Canfield. Mm, yeah. Right. And that was like, it's a very wholesome book, right? It yeah. talks about just principles to success. And uh, he said, yeah, write down a hundred things that you want to do or that you want in life. And that way, every time you're just like, I don't know what to do with myself, look at one of those goals and achieve them. I right? just work towards achieving them. Mm -hmm. right? It can be little things, like you said, shoes or whatever. And he gave me one thing about ownership where he says there's a general equation, which is that you have uh, you in a circumstance multiplied by the circumstance itself equals the result. You are the only variable. Blaming the circumstance, you remove yourself from ever being able to take responsibility or change anything because mm -hmm. you're saying you're fixed, right? right? But as long as you're willing to accept that you're the variable, then you can only look at yourself as to what could have been done differently yep. to change whatever the outcome is. Yeah, it's a very simple formula, easy to understand. Yeah, just be a victor instead of a victim. I always think of the mind or like everybody's mind. It's yeah. a, the especially mindset is very easy to change. Yeah, but at the same time, it's extremely difficult to change because sometimes people got stuck with the traditional thinking, and sometimes you have a mentor or a life changing event that will get your mindset shifted immediately, and then all of a sudden the things that you you do and you act, the, the way you speak every single day is completely different. I find that sometimes in order for anybody to go through that kind of process, it takes a long time. How would you determine whether or not this student is actually ready to take on some uh, actionable steps? When they start to get some aha moments is usually after two months. After two and, months. It, and, and, the, and the reason why is because we've 
What we've learned in the 15 years, okay, and we've learned a lot. I like to put the most important things in the first two months. To me, that's the most important. Like we even go into like personality and figuring out who you are personality wise, your strengths, your weaknesses, and your spouses. So I always like that, you know, if, if, if somebody has a partner or a friend, I'm like, yeah, like, and, and so then now you can collaborate because I give you an example, me and my wife are complete opposite, right? And there's, uh, I don't know if you've heard of the, the disc analysis. So essentially it gives you what your personality is. There's lots of them out there. There's Briggs Myers and all that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have a driver, influencer, somebody who's cautious, somebody who likes this. Me and my wife are complete opposites. Like, so I'm like an IS, so I'm inf influential and I like systems and processes. She's a driver, like kind of gets it, gets it done, but cautious as well too. And so we go through that because once you can understand your personality and your strength, it makes things so much easier. And so that's usually why we see the results within the first two months, because I'm focusing, I'm not even talking about real estate yet. I think people forget that it's just a vehicle. Then when you understand that piece and the money and how it all works, okay, now let's take a look. Okay, here's the fundamentals. Here's how it works. Is this really what you want to do? Or do you want to maybe start maybe a different business? We have somebody in our in our mentorship right now who's a, a, a yoga business. That's cool. That's what I want. Cause, because at the beginning, she figured out, well, her 50 goals in her top three or four. And then we narrow down on that and we give them focus. So if people are doing that, when they come to you, what do they think they're coming to you for? Because actually like somebody might say, oh, you know, I'm learning this life stuff, but like I came to you because I wanted to get into real estate. Well, I really want them to get into real estate because real estate's a good vehicle. It still is a good vehicle. And just, so it's not like she's not going to, she understands it now. Now she's actually attending a lot of the, the bi-weekly calls that we have. She's come up to the mastermind event. Because again, real estate is a very good vehicle because what it does is it allows you to make money while you sleep. Because if you don't figure out how to make money while you sleep, you'll work until you die. Mm -hmm. So she understands the principle and the concept of it, but she's also really wants to do the yoga because she she understands it well. So we're now we're helping her with the systems in the back end and how to get people into the room, how to write it, the database piece of it, how to talk to her audience. So we're helping her with that. Because mm -hmm. now she can make money through that business then she can now start to generate money that she can now put into real estate or do some joint ventures or learn how to raise capital. So it's it's a holistic view of what we're doing. Do most of your students uh, have a full-time job or they're sort of like business owners? Yeah, most of them have, have full-time jobs. Okay. Yeah. What kind of investment approach would you usually recommend? So what we do, then we go through all the different investment strategies that are out there. And then we make them, because we do homework as well too. So they got to go away, do their own homework, come back to us. And then we go through the pros and cons. And then we have them pick their top three. And then we kind of narrow that down. Because again, it's about laser focus. When you get into real estate investor for the first time, what do they tell you? They tell you pick a strategy and master it. Don't try and master 10. Then also too, we're there to guide them based on the strategy that they've selected. Is it a good time to implement that strategy in the market that we're in today? So, so we're there to guide them as well too. Like we got to be their guardrails as well. So, if a student is saying that, hey, listen, like in this market, I want to see, I want to do bird bird strategy because I heard that over and over again. Mm -hmm. And but right now with the current market condition, it may not be the best strategy for for uh, for bird mm -hmm. math uh, for anybody to implement this method. Yeah. What would you say to them? Is it going to be okay? Listen, like the because of the current market we recommend you to do something else or would you try to like uh, encourage that idea to get them to uh, kind of understand the whole process of bird method? It, it, it depends, right? I don't know if we could say that the bird method just doesn't work. It, it's more difficult. It's, more it's, more, more yeah, it's a lot more difficult now, but it also depends on the property that they're selecting. Is the lot large enough? Can you add two units and then maybe potentially hire and best use and have a third unit in the backyard? So you have to take a garden look at the suite. whole entire picture, but more importantly than all, yeah, garden suite but we're also teaching them how to run their numbers. We're making them also be responsible <clears throat> to say, these are the numbers, here's the income coming in potentially, and here are the expenses. Oh, this doesn't work. Okay, so then what do we implement next now? Let's take a look at your second strategy. Let's take a look at your third strategy. And if one of those three work, okay, now we're gonna implement that. Now we're gonna be the best that we can be on that particular strategy. Like when I first started, I did the burr back in 2008. Nobody even called it the burr back then. Yeah. No. And I, I was horrible at it, but I, I didn't have the experience. And so I had to stop. And then I, I, I remember looking online. I was like, hey, better strategy to invest in real estate. And then I came across rent to own. Boom, mastered it. I mastered that thing for like five or six years. Probably did like 80, 90 deals, wrote a book on it. Right. And I just mastered it. Then I went back to the burr. And so, you know, to answer your question, yeah, sometimes you do have to shift. 
because if it's not working or the numbers don't make sense. Sometimes people like to make these boxes, right? They make these boxes of the strategy. This is the birth strategy. This yep. is the rental strategy. This is the house flip strategy. This is this strategy. And it's really just a matter of having uh, a degree of understanding of everything so that you have versatility in your application. Because mm -hmm. not everything's going to work. People will always look for this golden standard and it's like this blanket that covers everything. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come right. right. It's like back in the day when it wasn't called the birth strategy, it was called thinking, right? Yeah. And you just kind of go out and do some real estate investing and then, oh, this works. So yeah. you have to be adaptive to your environment and the current market requires a different type of adapting. So actually, I think that leads us to the next question, which is in the current market, how do you recommend adapting? I think the best way to adapt in this market is just go out there, feel, see, and touch. Go out there. Do not lose the momentum. Yeah, just go, look, see what's out there. Yeah. Because even though somebody may be asking 400,000 or five, whatever the number is, doesn't mean that that's what they're going to get. Maybe you're going to get it lower. Maybe you take a look and, and come with some different ideas. But more importantly, make sure you're going out with an expert. Don't go with the auntie or your uncle if they don't have any investment properties. They're not going to be able to see what you're trying to do because it, that's not what their skill set is. So if you're going to go out and look at an investment property, make sure you're going out with an expert because that expert can say, I've seen this before. This is what can work. Here are your potentials. Yeah, the, the height's a little low here, but don't worry. I, we've worked in the city of Peterborough or Hamilton or wherever it is that we can get away with this but I'm not too sure. Maybe I'll bring in my other expert. Then let's put an offer in. Let's put it conditional. Let's see if this can work and whatever. And that's what it is. And listen, every time I go through a property and like put your bedroom there, you're going to put the bathroom there and the kitchen there. I'm telling you, by the time that property closes, that whole thing has changed six or seven times. Am I lying? Yeah. yeah no, exactly. No, no, no. That's exactly true. <laughs> exactly. So, that, so that's why it's important just to go out there and, and, and see, feel, and touch and right. see what's in the market. Put offers in. Yeah. Right. It, it, listen, people are worried right now about is the market going to go down a little bit more? Is it going to go up now? Is now multiple offers going to come, come back in? Listen, man, whatever happens in the next year, don't pay that much attention to it. Yeah. This is where people are making the mistake. Any of my clients or even myself bought properties back in 2013, 10 years later, 2023. Nobody's going to say, oh my God, it was a horrible investment. Anybody that buys a property this year and they go to 2033, I guarantee they're going to be like, a goddamn good property I bought in 2023. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. not going to say it was, it was shitty. No, because anything you buy, even if it's a horrible house, in 10 years, right, we've got a strong fundamentals here. We have immigration, like what, quarter million coming to the GTA. Not, I know Canada, I think, is like over 400,000. Yeah, a quarter million. million. That's, a lot, that's yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of people. We're not building that many homes that quickly. No, we're not going to. <laughs> yeah, no, we're not going yeah, to. yeah, yeah. No, they, they're, right. trying to, they're trying to increase density and do other solutions, but, you know, slow-acting government is not going to happen very fast, so, you know, real estate has to go in a certain direction. Right. I mean, you can, you can hedge, and you can roll the dice, right? Because mm -hmm. that's sometimes what we're doing, making educated decisions, right, right? In, a, in, a certain, in a certain manner. But, yeah, fundamentally, I think you, you nailed it. If yeah. you know that people are coming in, right. why not bet? And then, look, and then you can narrow it down, and then you start taking a look at fundamentals, fundamentals in the market. You know, I go through this as well, too, in the mentorship program. Like, you know, what's the population increase? or growth is it going up or is it going down yeah right like what's happening with infrastructure like one of the reasons why i ended up moving into peterborough was the 407 i saw that coming i was like okay that's like building like another artery to your heart that's going to allow more people to get in and out of that city quickly right then you got like job growth what's happening with the job so you, you want and vacancy that's another yeah. great one as well too so take a look at the fundamental don't just hope that the market is going to continue to go up like here's one of the <clears> things <throat> i tell people as well too don't even worry about appreciation right because like nobody knows where the market is going to go in the next year or two appreciation is like icing on the cake the cake is the cash so if you look at a cake if you eat the cake what do you want you want the cake as opposed to the icing icing is the sweet stuff that's the appreciation so don't forget, worry about the appreciation take it when it comes because you don't know when it's going to come would you say we should still focus on the cash flow right now, uh, cash flow for the properties. Because again, the reason why I'm asking is because sometimes when we're looking at the current market, cash mm -hmm. flow might, with a high interest rate, cash flow might be $100, $200. Mm -hmm. Or even if you're lucky, get $500. Yeah. Right? But over the course of one year or two years, that's only either 6000 or 12000 Is it better to try to get into something that maybe breaks even a little bit or have a bit of a negative cash flow, but such a great deal where there's a huge upside for the next two years or is it better to still find something that produces a positive cash flow? Yeah. Well, I think it goes to the question, are you are you an investor? So then here's what I did in the beginning. I was buying in Whitby. And then the prices got a little more expensive, then I moved to Oshawa. Then it got a little more expensive, and I jumped into Curtis and Bowmanville. Then in 2017, I went to Peterborough. Then I'm helping investors like in those surrounding areas. So I'll go where the competition isn't that stiff. I like boring real estate. 
as you were saying it, I was thinking that that it really depends on your investment strategy, right? Because yeah. uh, to what Ping's saying, people who counted on cash flow, uh, one of the things is that when you have only five hundred dollars cash flow, and then we have something like a variable interest rate going up right now, those people's cash flow is just demolished. On top of that, people who didn't bank on cash flow at all and they were just at that break even point, now their cash flow negative and therefore should sell. It depends on like what it is that your strategy is, and I think the whole thing is you have to have some kind of contingency for sure right? because you don't want listen, you don't want negative cash flow when you. When you start getting into like 500, 000, 1,500, I know people that are in that situation. It's not fun. You don't want to speculate, <laughs> yeah, right? right? Even for me, like last year, look, I know, in I knew interest rates were going to go up. I knew. I could see it because of all the printing that they did. I didn't know it was going to happen that fast. It happened faster than I even realized it. And it wasn't until I, I, I sat down and had a conversation with my wife. And I'm like, okay, we got to reevaluate and take a look at everything. We got to start plugging holes in our boat, right? Because we're invariable. We're starting to sink. Right. And we're like, okay, we, we got to go fix. And a lot of people don't want to talk about this. And like, I said, fuck it. We're going fixed because our properties were like, we had lots of good cash flow in all of our properties. And then we're like, I'm good. I'm good with positive 100 or 200. And I'll let it ride for the next three years, five years, whatever it is that I had to lock in at, because depending on where I was in my uh, in my mortgage with each of these properties, I had to lock in at three, two, or five. I know a lot of people say, yeah, but you know what? It's going to come back down. Yeah, there's always that kind of possibility. Right. Then I can now switch my attention from my investment properties, let it continue to ride and do what it needs to do while I got somebody paying down my mortgage. I know in five years and boom, okay, you know what? It's probably going to go up right? And then I can focus on my other business, right? This is a game of creating businesses and creating different streams of income. And that's what I've done with, with my investment properties, with private lending, the brokerage. So I own a brokerage as well too. We got like 150 plus agents there. Also with the podcast, so the podcast now is generating some additional income. You know, I've, I've picked up a property in Mexico. That'll be some cash flow nice. going on there. So I'm always looking at opportunities. I'm always looking at what's the landscape, where are things going, and how can I create more income? I don't want to be taking money out of my pocket and pushing it out if it's not going to create income for me. So I'm not buying yeah. negative cash flow and properties. No. You clearly have an approach of figuring out what it is that you want, why it is that you're doing. And you're not really about those high risk, high rewards kind of guy. You're about, you know, boring real estate, things that are a little bit more controlled, mm -hmm. right? And that's mm -hmm. also why, if you, as you just say, you went to a, f a fixed mortgage after doing variable for so long because you know what? It's okay. You're ahead of you were ahead of the game for a while, and you'd rather go for something that is secure because this probably feeds like into several things in your life right now. Would be it like family, uh, be it uh, the future uh, that you have to consider for for your family, and several other things. And your education process seems to be very holistic, holistic in the sense that it considers a, a whole bunch of things that help guide what it is you're doing. Because people are just like, well, what should I do? People come to ask and ask us, what should you do? And it's like it's hard to answer that question without knowing you. Yeah, right? What do you want? Go yeah. and figure that out. Sit down and kind of you know. Um, planet. Yeah, because even when you're saying like, I'm looking at opportunities in, in, in other countries, you said Mexico, right? Would you recommend that to somebody else? No, it depends on like who they are, what they can stomach, do they need something to be close by or, or not, right? Right. I remember somebody was saying, what type of mortgage should I get, variable or fixed? And I I told them it depends what helps you sleep at night. Yeah. If the fluctuations don't exactly. help you sleep at night, go for fixed. At least you can plan it. You got to plan this all out. You gotta, if, you, if you're trying to get into real estate investing or you're trying to be an entrepreneur, you got to plan it out. You can't just do it on, oh, I hope this is working. I saw somebody else do it. Plan it out. Write it out. Right? Have a business plan. It'd be like driving to Florida with no map or yeah. you had no GPS system. Well, how are you going to get there? You're just going to hope? You're just going to just start driving south and then you start getting on some winding roads and now all of a sudden now you're at the ocean, but you're, you're on the west coast or on the east coast. So you, you got to have a map yeah. and that's the best way to do it. And then- Here's a more, the, the, the second most important thing is once you got that map, to start driving. You don't have to have it completely figured out, right? Because it, it's similar to say driving to Florida and you have the headlights on. The headlights are only going to show you so much down the road. That's how you do it. You got the map and then you just go. And then you have some of it figured out, but not the whole thing. But if you have the plan, it'll, it'll eventually, uh, uh, you know, reveal itself. We usually say that as, as long as we have about 70% of things or, or information or things figured out, that's when we need to act because at the moment that you, you're trying to overanalyze or try to get closer to perfection, you're not going to act at the end. It's right? a good yeah. enough strategy. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> and, and also the moment that you can bet on 70% of the accuracy, honestly, like the, that means like the, the 
failure is only 30% or less, right? Yeah. It's good to take a shot. And look, and the more you write things down, right? If you put down 10 things on your whiteboard and you achieve three of them after the end of the year, you can say, oh, well, like I'm a failure. No, you're not. I guarantee you'll be ahead of 80% of the rest of the world. Just start writing them down. Like uh, I remember when I first started down this path, one of the things that we did, here's what I did. When I knew that I wanted to leave the bank because I was, I was disgusted with where I was in, and I was behind, I was more month than money. Like I was paycheck to paycheck. And I almost lost my job because 2008, when they, the, the whole financial crisis happened and going into work and they started laying a lot of people off. And I remember at the end of the day when I, I thought I was going to lose my job, I just bought my house. I got two young kids at home. And I remember driving home. I said, never again do I ever want to feel like somebody's in control of my financial freedom or future. So I'm like, okay, how do I do this? I started just when I started getting Jim Rohn. And then I knew that I had to get into real estate. Two years later, I started an investment company. I know nothing about investing in real estate. But here's what I did. Because I knew it was going to take a lot of time away from my kids. And I, on my way home, I went and got a Bristol board. And then I put Smart Home Choice in the middle. And I said, listen, guys. I said, I'm going to start Smart Home Choice. This is a company. What do you guys want from me? They're like, we want a mascot. I'm like, okay. So I put a mascot. What else do you guys want? Because um, I was teaching them about like, you know, how important school was. Education. All right, we're going to educate people. What else do you guys want? We want a million dollars every year. All right, a million. I didn't care what they wanted. I just wanted them to be a part of this dream, of this vision of where we were going so they can see what I was doing and that this was going to take some time away from them. And I said, what about vacation? Two months every year. Four. Yeah. So, we, so I put four months down and I'm like, I wonder if we can start a company or a business where we do take four months vacation. And, and we do. I shut my company down, Smart Home Choice, for two months in the summer. Done. No events, no nothing. Go up to the cottage. Does that appeal out. to you right now? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. yeah. I just shut it down. Yeah. And I tell everybody, I tell my members, I tell my investors, peace out. If you need to go look at a property, we still have my agents are here. We can help you. Yeah. But other than that, there's no events. And so I figured out the four hour work week. That's how I do it. I still do a little bit oh, of work, yeah. four hours, done. Then we come back because by September, I can't drink no more. I can't party anymore. I'm done entertaining. I'm finished. I'm done. Okay. Now you realize that, oh, I need purpose. Because so many people are so caught up in like, can't wait till I'm 65 years old to retire. Well, if you retire twice a year, then you never have to worry about retiring. And then soon as November hits, see you later, investors. See you. Bye. I'm gone. And I'm out. I'm out for two months. And that's why we picked up the property in Mexico. Because I, I realize how short this time is. It. And the reason why is because I've seen death. I lost my mom when you know I was in my early 30s. I lost my mother-in-law three months later. I lost my younger sister like you know about five six years ago. So I've seen death very close up in person. And when you see it that close, you realize that this this ride is not forever. Enjoy the ride. Figure out what you want out of this life, and be the best version you can be. Be a better version of the person that you were yesterday. Work your ass off and then figure out a time to take that break. Because during those breaks, I get to reflect on life. I get to realize, am I going in the right direction? And then I can come back and I can now service, provide service to the people that need it and, and show them what I've learned over the years and the mistakes that I've made and say, hey, come on me if you want to on this particular journey that I'm on. And so that now they can kind of somewhat mimic what I'm doing if they like what I'm doing. Most people want that. They want the freedom to be able to have a couple months off a year. I think the biggest difference between you and a lot of people is that you have this, such a clear vision on how you want to design your life, right? Mm -hmm. The clarity. And I, I, and I think that's why you're emphasizing that a lot in your mentorship program, because again, without that, how are we going to design your, even the routine, right? And, mm -hmm. and even the, uh, the strategy that you're going to implement, because for someone who wanted to be as passive as possible or have that kind of freedom, maybe you shouldn't get into um, house flipping, for example, right? You might say, right. oh, I want that because there's a huge capital. But guess what? You're going to sacrifice a lot of time and effort into that project, mm -hmm. right? And maybe rent to own is the way to go, right? right? So, and, and you just got to kind of sit down and figure that out in the beginning. You know, I, I know in the beginning, here, here are three things I'll kind of share with you as well, too. So in the beginning, I think most people would, would agree with this, maybe not was I was focused on financial freedom. I need financial freedom. At the end of the day, you want more money than month. You don't want more month than money. <laughs> That's not a good place to be. And so I focused on that. And I did that for quite a, quite a while. Then in 2009, and I built a couple of different businesses along the way, broke my ankle. And then I, I went to like this depression. And then I realized I, I don't have time to break my ankle. I've got all these other things going on. I don't have time for that. Yeah, I ain't got time for this shit. And then I realized, oh, I don't have 
time freedom. And then I took a look at my businesses and I'm like, I'm doing too much. I'm working in my business. Even after almost 10 years, I was like in my business too much. And so then I had to hire somebody to do my podcast. I had to hire like a better admin. I had to have somebody do my social media post. And so I started bringing in the right people around me to help me get my time back and focus on what was more important and what I'm good at. And then COVID hit and then I'm like, oh, I don't have geographical freedom. And so that's why now I've gone to Mexico. And so now I've gone to the geographical freedom. And who knows, there's probably another another freedom that I'm going to focus on afterwards. But those are the three freedoms. Start off with financial, then time. And now I'm into the geographical because I don't want to ever be locked down again. So I'm working on get my temporary passport. I'm working on then get my permanent passport. And then I get my residency, sorry. And then, and then passport. You got a really supporting wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just dragging her along for the ride. <laughs> That's uh. funny. No, you, you have a very unique outlook on it. It's not so rigid and uh, stringent and uh, superficial. Actually, it's not superficial. It's deep. Well, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I do. Yeah. And, and look, and I'll, and I'll share something with you. And I think you guys are on the right path. And I think you, you're going to get there as well, too, is that in 2016, when I started doing my podcast, I only did like eight shows right? because I was, I was really busy doing a lot of other things. So I said, okay. I can dedicate to do one podcast every month. And then during doing that, and I, and I started the podcast, I was like, okay, I know enough teaching people through the podcast. I looked back at it last year and I was like, I started this podcast to teach people and the podcast has taught me way more. And so through the podcast and, and talking and listening to successful entrepreneurs or people that are coming up, I realized that it wasn't only just about the money. It was also about the lifestyle and that some people were chasing the money and trying to get these accolades. And then all of a sudden they were depressed and they would share that story with. And so then the question started changing to like, well, what's the purpose of this? What's the purpose of life? What are you chasing now? What are you doing? Over the years of asking those questions, I started to learn and pick up uh, things that were important to people. And I'm like, oh, that is powerful. And so I would take what I liked from each of those interviews and then started implementing some of those things into my life. That's what the journey is about. And I don't know where I'm going to be in a few years from now, but I have an idea, but it's from the podcast and sitting down and talking to some interesting people. It's interesting because that's almost like the podcast acted for you like mentorship. Oh, that's definitely how we feel, just so you know. <laughs> you don't have to know anything. You just have to know how to ask some questions and you have experts in a room with you yeah. To get to ask them some incredible and some difficult and intriguing questions. Funny you say that because uh, here's a question for you. <laughs> yeah. What do you think is more valuable sometimes? People knowing stuff or people knowing how to ask right questions? I think it's about asking the right question. These are the things that I know and I can do this. And then you feel like, okay, I know this. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. But I think that the biggest gap that people in general have is not knowing what they don't know. So not even knowing the, the questions to ask, mm -hmm. right? So I think the question part is very crucial towards anybody's growth. You have a lot of insights, a lot of very valuable information. And all I have to do for anybody else to listen to the answer is ask the right question. Whatever question I have, probably somebody else has. Right, 100%. Also, the first thing is to be willing to ask questions. A lot of people, a lot of younger generation out there, they are they are they're not even like when they don't know something, they don't they they don't recognize it, and they don't try to ask or seek for any help, mm -hmm. right? So I think the very first step is to figure out how to like be willing to ask and and don't be afraid to uh share your thoughts or whatever because uh, sometimes people don't with lack of uh, confidence they don't do that. You know what's right. even more difficult than that is when you've gotten to the point of being in this game for five years or ten years. And then you are now scared to ask questions because you're like, oh, I should know this. So the podcast has allowed me to just say, you know what? Who cares? If you don't know, just ask. Fine, I look silly. Okay. doesn't matter. Just no ask. Thinks ask that. the questions. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but just ask the questions. Yeah. Right? Because you can't, you can't, even if you've learned it or heard it before, there's so much information. One of the best things I remember learning was don't try to memorize anything. Just know where to get the information. And if you can do that and you can help be that traffic cop to point people in the right direction, like people call me and ask me, I'm like, oh, awesome question. Should you incorporate now? Here's my accountant. Give him a shout. Right? Because it's going to be different for everybody, right? Yeah. So it's about who 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 is on your power team. That's the thing. It was where people get lost in the details. It's good to have like a general big picture plan. Yeah. Right? But the minute people start getting lost in the details, people get scared. So, I mean, people start to lose it. But you can figure out the details along the way yeah. as long as you got the general idea. Yeah, right? 100%. So. Having like 150 agents is a lot of work. Well, it, right? it, it, it can be, but I have I have a good team around me. Like I've, I've got partners. I have an office manager. I have like somebody, you know, who's at the, at the front desk in the, the different locations. And we have an office in Coburg and Oshawa. Yeah. And then we just opened up an office in Brickworks in Toronto. So 
you have to have the right people around you. The, the, the only, listen, man, we all have 24 hours in a day. Right. And, and I can also tell you this. I never knew this is exactly where my journey was going to take me. God damn, it's been a hell of a ride. Like, it's so, it's been so much fun. And I remember one of the things wh when I first started investing in real estate, and I remember I got to like, I don't know, like 15 properties. And, and it was a coworker at TD. He's like, gosh, you're going to lose it all. Holy shit, was I ever scared? Because I thought I was going to lose it all. And then I realized that, oh, but guess what? I can't lose the skills. So once you have the skills, then I can rebuild if I had to. I don't want to. Yeah. Right. But I've got the skills. Yeah. I, could, yeah. I, could, I could do it again. I've seen how it works, right? And actually that knowledge, when you reflect on it and you know that should you have lost everything, you had to do it again, you could do it way faster. That yeah. also means that you can show somebody how to do it way faster. Can you recommend three highly effective uh, habits? Because obviously you're you're very big on that. Uh, three habits uh, for the audience to sort of like learn in a, or, or integrate it into their life? Well, two that I can think of off the top of my head are discipline and consistency. Doing things even when you don't want to do them. There are things that I do from time to time that I don't like doing, but I do it. Here's one. It's outside of real estate investing, working out. Like I go to yoga three times a week in the morning, get up at six o'clock in the morning. I don't like doing that, but I like the result, right? right? So that's just that's one thing, right? So discipline and consistency is important in your business and whatever it is that you're doing. Pivot and adapt. The faster you can do that, I remember when I used to do my newsletters. That's another thing too. I used to do. I used to write every single newsletter every week, and I've done. I've done that since 2010. Wow. A newsletter every single week, except for the summers and in the winters. And I remember looking back at some of those newsletters and like, oh my god, they're making a new change. Real estate market is never going to be the same. Oh, they're making another change. Real estate market is never going to be the same. So the quicker you can pivot and adapt, the faster you're 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 going to be able to one stop complaining about the situation that you're in. Like when COVID hit, we just went boom. We just went online. I ain't got to complain. Just went online. And that allowed more investors to find us. And a third one, I would say just, I would just say, don't complain. Don't complain. Yeah. Just don't complain. Right? Like whatever happens, uh, and if it's, if, if it's not good or if it's bad, then just learn from it. Like what can I learn from it? And then just move forward. Like you're taking away some of people's favorite pastime. Yeah, yeah. Especially <laughs> when you go on like social media. Yeah, right? yeah, And, and yeah. you look in people's, uh, you know, in the, um, the comments. Exactly, right? You know, that's like, <laughs> that's to like do yeah, you what know? social media is based off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I guess maybe I'll add one more too. Posts and ghosts. I learned that one from Joe Rogan, yeah. right? Like people are so worried about, oh my God, my video is not good or this or that. Listen, man, it's a great way to get your message out there. Just do it. Yeah, don't yeah. overthink it. That's where you're, you're really removing yourself from bottlenecking your own operation. Okay, you're always like, oh, the lighting's not right, or this isn't right, or yeah, uh, I should have asked, said it like this. And no, there's there's too many things that we can go into, because even when it comes to your real estate operation, your real estate investing, there's so many things that I think people can would want to know about. I want to know, but mm -hmm. I feel like we should probably cut this a little bit shorter, otherwise we'll talk forever. But if anybody wants to reach out to you, yep. how can they get in touch with you? What's the best way? Yeah, I mean, you can. Uh, my email is gary at, uh, at smarthomechoice.ca. Um, just do a search on my name, Gary Hibbert, on Instagram or Facebook, LinkedIn. You know, I'm on most of the uh, the social media platforms. In 2023, what is the best real estate investing strategy for you? Uh, Midterm rentals, I think, is a way to go. Maybe even potentially some short term, some higher and best use. So taking a look at properties where you can get more than two units in there. Uh, and look, they're, they're trying to make changes at the government level to allow and to remove some of that red tape. So that's what you want to focus on. Cash flow. I'm always cash big flow. on the cash flow piece. Um, do you do any Airbnb? Uh, I am down in Mexico. <laughs> That's the right place for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm going to be doing Airbnb down in Mexico, right? No, I mean, look, be... everybody wants a par piece of paradise, right? And, and and paradise is down there. It's almost a little novel to be doing that, eh? Like to have like a, an Airbnb. Oh, I, I have an Airbnb in Mexico. You yeah. know, it's just like, yeah, <laughs> big move here. Yeah, if any of my friends want to go, sure. Yeah, I'll hook yeah. you up. By the way, I have a question for that. Uh, moving money into obviously Mexico, Costa Rica, or whatever, right? Like, yep. uh, I, like the, do you... Qualifying the mortgage wouldn't mm. wouldn't be feasible over there, right? Because the interest rate is so high. Awesome question. So how did we do it? So we went down there first, and we wrote down that we wanted a property in Mexico. We saw it. We loved the location. The area is phenomenal. And, uh, and then we came back, and then, like I've said before, you know, it's important to have your power team. So I reached out to my accountant. said, look, we found this property in Mexico. Here's what the price is. Uh, how do we do this? He goes, give me a couple of days. Came back. He goes, okay, we got to get a life insurance policy. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take the money out of your corporation, we're going to move into this life insurance policy, and that's how you get the money out tax-free. Then we're going to take that money, Ooh. and then we're going to go buy that property in Mexico. And then you are going to, you're going to loan that money to yourself. So you're going to become the bank, which is essentially um, infinite banking. And then eventually that life policy will eventually pay for itself. So we bought that property tax-free. 
Okay, but that means you had enough uh, equity Correct. somewhere to pull the money out. So Correct. you technically, so it's kind of like taking out lines of credit. The life insurance policy is just to get the money out of the country. Not just only out of the country. You could use that as well too to buy investment properties here. I've just created my own bank and I'm lending to myself from yep. the bank. Got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So basically equity from your portfolio and then you use that to buy that property outright. Okay. Because if I were to do this, because mm -hmm. I looked into the investing in Costa Rica, the money wouldn't be coming back to Canada, right? You, you're going to Yeah. So the money is there. So I, there's two different things that we're, we're working on and then we'll see we'll see where it goes but one would be once we get that property up in mexico up and running then we might bring in a joint venture partner so then that way now we can maybe get some back some back some of our capital from that standpoint and the other thing is either getting our our temporary to then permanent residency to getting our potential passport which would then allow us to i think even before you get the passport which will allow us then to be able to open bank accounts potentially get a mortgage down there it's, it's a bit of a process obviously obviously to get to that point Yes. But that would be the track that we're on. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what mistakes we make along the way. But we'll, we'll figure it out. That, 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 I'm, that I'm sure of. Is there like a cash on cash return that you've calculated for properties over there for it to be worth it or an ROI that you're measuring on a cap rate? Well, I mean, right now, you know, using some very simple basic numbers. I mean, the thing's going to cash flow around, I think, maybe 13, 1400 at the lowest, it should be doing that. But that's with all my money in there. And how much is a property like that? Uh, so that was like 256 US. So what I worked at like about three and change. And you're saying 13 or 14 positive cash flow? Yeah. Of every month. Yeah. yeah. So no. Yeah, so yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. And that's like, that's based on 60% occupancy. And that's factoring in interest on the, like LLCs or anything? Or like pretty much like as if though the whole thing's mortgaged. Yeah. That's right? really good. No, because again, great. if you look at it, the purchase price is still low, <clears> right? This is the first year that we're actually looking outside, not just outside the uh, the town here um, yeah. or the city here. It's uh, we're actually, because we're thinking about instead of going to like Alberta, New Brunswick or whatever, let's just go south, right? So the two spots that we're looking at right now is uh, Texas and uh, Florida, right? But we want to be on the passive side, right? Yeah. We don't want to go in there and then, and, then, and then be the operator over there because it's just not feasible. Our business is right here. So we, we looked into so many different locations and, uh, but yeah, no. Yeah. This is this is going to be a very interesting year. I think we built enough uh portfolio in Canada and uh even uh, like the past 10 years has been a nice ride, right? The next uh, 5 to 10 years if it's go continue to go up, great. We already have a portfolio that we're holding, but we want to start diversifying into some something else. If it doesn't go as aggressively as the past 10 years, at least we're we're in different market as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're diversifying within a asset class that you understand. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah I agree with that so. for sure. That's that's one of the reasons why we did that as well. Yeah. Is it, it was just more to move some of the money out of Canada. Canadian government is like a little concerning right now. <laughs> it, yes. it, it is. <laughs> I still believe there's still strong fundamentals here. But yes, I would like to diversify in this real estate asset class.